Uh, hello. We are here on uh, State of Mind. If you like what you see, you got to hit, see that little button right there? That you got it. What are you doing? <laughs> One thing I have, <laughs> what you're going to learn is that uh, this is the kind of thing where it's like acting. You never know what I'm going to do from one second to the next. Oh, no. And it's, that's the way it is. All right, I have somebody here today. Uh, let me introduce him. His name is Josh. Oh, See like how that, that is? That was good. Josh Swicker. Uh, Swicker. <laughs> He is a, a, an actor, a singer, a soul cycle instructor, uh, my friend. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. So where'd you grow up? I grew up in Springfield, Illinois. My dad's a pastor, so every seven, eight years, we'd kind of bounce around. But uh, Quincy, Illinois, then Springfield, Illinois, and then I moved to Chicago after high school. Really? So, yeah. So what is Illinois like? Is, I don't know. It's flat. It's corn. It's Abraham Lincoln. Oh, really? That's, that's all it is. Yeah, no. I, that's the way, cool. The way I say it, it's, it's a great place to be from because it is small town, uh, but it's kind of that stereotypical small town that I liked, and I, I enjoyed it. So... Um, so yeah, I love I love that I had that upbringing, and I love that I shot out here. How old were you when you left Illinois? I drove. I worked with an acting coach in Chicago once, twice. The first time he was like, "You're horrible, never act." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And, and he came back six months later, and he said, "Let's let's try one more time." And the breakdown was eighteen year old Midwestern, whatever me. And oh, and and, you were eighteen? Yeah. 18 or 19, and uh, and he was like, do you mind if I send this to people in, in L.A.? And I was like, sure. And and so uh, he sent it to Luba Rocklin at the time, the management company, and, and he's like, they'd, they'd love to sign you. And I checked my bank account, and I had five or six grand in my, to my name, and I was like, okay. So I put everything I owned in my Hyundai, and I just drove the 30 hours, and uh, and I was out there for three months, and I didn't book a job in three months. And I was like, well, clearly it didn't work. And I ran out of my five grand. So I went back to Chicago and I started working with like print catalog stuff. And, oh, and modeling. That kinda, yeah. And, I forgot uh, to say you were a model too. I appreciate you leaving that one out. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but uh, I did that for a few years and, uh, and, and jo- enjoyed it and studied it for two years at College of DuPage in Chicago. And then uh, I turned 22 I think, and I was like, you know, if I don't do it now, I probably won't do it. And uh, so, let's see, January 2014, I drove back out, and I stayed. Wow. You know, I got to tell you something, and I know this is just a, uh, I think I've talked about it before, but the fact that you at 18, with six grand, left home, that to me, you have to understand something. I've always had a mother, and then I had another mother. I've always had mothers. You know, Paula became my mom. I've never, you know, I can't wash clothes, man. This is the first time I ever said this. <laughs> this is the first time I ever said this because I'm having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, who, who, oh, my son. No, this is no lie, man. My, <laughs> my son goes yesterday in the car. Dad, you don't know how to wash clothes? I said, no, that's not right. (laughs) That's what he said? Oh, no. I said, don't rub it in, dude, okay? At least I'm honest and I can admit I don't know how to wash clothes. And he's like, you really don't? I said, Joshua, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. So when I hear that you, you know, did that, you don't understand. It makes me go, wow, that's a big deal. To you, it probably was just what it was, and there's a lot of people who do that, right? They leave at yeah. 18. I didn't leave home till I was 45. <laughs> yeah, but you were—you've always killed it. You're—you're you're, you're too successful. It's fine. Yeah. No, you can get but away anyway. With it. So that's where you start acting. Now, how any any uh, in your family? How many people you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have uh, I have three sisters. 
no brothers. And my parents were both, my dad was a music composition major. My mom was music performance. And so they were very in that world. They, they traveled with an opera company for a while. And uh, that was my first paid job. I was in Gianni Schicchi in a, really? uh, like this Italian opera. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so our rule in the family was four years of piano and then you could pick your instrument. And so I was drummer. That's, that was kind of my instrument. And we all kind of sang a little bit. My mom's a, a private voice coach and now my sister is as well. And uh, so just kind of grew up in it a little yeah. bit and always did theater in school. And, and uh, but then, uh, but yeah, so it was, it was always in the blood. And, and then I figured out a way somehow, you know, by the grace of God to turn it into a career. But it's funny because I'm, and you could ask anyone in my family, I am by far the least talented person in my family. <laughs> And they all have like stand up jobs. I like I, that you're honest, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and you're just like my son, and your name is almost the same. He has three sisters. Joshua. He is, I am Joshua, legally. So that's the same name? That's, a, that's interesting. Hmm. Uh, any mental health in your family? Any mental illness? Anything? You know, I, no one in my family that I'm, as far as I'm concerned, uh, deals with. Anxiety, panic attacks, depression um, that I know of. Bipolar. Um, yeah, bipolar. None, none of that. Um, I never, I remember in junior high, uh, we were at a school dance and a kid that was kind of like a rough kid, he, uh, he had a panic attack. Mm. Ended up like putting, punching or putting his head through a, a brick wall and opened him up, they brought an ambulance, and, and, and that was the first time I'd even heard of it. And I was 15, maybe. Wow. And I, I was like, what's anxiety? And they're like, well, it's this thing where, you know, your, your breath can get this, or you start to get tense. And I'm like, why? And, and, mm -hmm. and it, I, it didn't compute what a panic attack would be, or an anxiety attack. And then, let's see, when did it happen? I was, I went to, I was leaving for college. I was two weeks away from going to Chicago. And um, I was in the Wolverine movie, and I grabbed my Slurpee. <laughs> it's before I knew what health and wellness was. Grabbed my Slurpee, and I went to take a sip, and I couldn't swallow. And I literally went, and I spit it everywhere. My heart started racing. Whoa. Lost my. And so I ran out of the theater. I called my dad. I was like, Dad, I, I think I'm dying. Like I, I told, I couldn't figure out how to swallow. And and he was like, I mean, you're going to college soon. You're probably just nervous. And I was like, That's weird. And Nothing happened after that, and then, let's see, I went on a mission trip when I was 19 alone from Mexico, almost to Panama. What's a mission trip? Um, I just, I went into uh, like Nicaragua and Honduras oh, and Mexico. Oh, that's my dad's? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we, we found either like an orphanage that needed help doing wow. something or a church that needed to be repainted or school, you know, and, and you could go into schools and sometimes it was fun, you know, you're, and you're singing head, shoulders, knees and toes. And, no. and then sometimes it was going into a orphanage that took in women that were like under 14 that had been raped by gangs. And, oh my goodness. I mean, like just crazy, you know, women, their, their stomachs are growing and they're girls and they don't know why. And, and so. How old were you? Uh, I was 19. And you and went for how long? That trip was a month and a half. Damn. Um, but uh, very eye-opening and in a, in a good way. Yeah. Um, but I remember we were on a puddle jumper f in Nicaragua, and it was like a four- or five-seater plane. And I'm getting nervous. And, I, and all of a sudden, the guy next to me, he looks like this big Samoan dude. I've never met him. Grabs, puts his arm around me, and puts his hand on my leg. Because he looked at me, and I guess I wasn't looking some type of way. And, uh, and then right here, I started to get pins and needles. You know when you sit on yes. your arm or something? Yes. Um, I started to get pins and needles on my mustache. And I'm, and I'm not, I don't know anything about breath work. I'm just, I'm an 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid. Yeah. And, and then it started to move throughout my face. And then it got to the point where my whole face was pins and needles. Like you could, and it would just be like pins and needles. Yeah. And um, ended up. Being fine, I landed, I got off the plane, within 30 minutes to an hour, it went away. But that was another, I was like, huh, this is interesting. And then once or twice on planes, like normal planes, I'd have panic attacks where, and, and they, weren't made, they weren't crazy panic attacks, no. but just a real like. But that's the beginning. <laughs> you know, like you get, you oh, get like yeah. that. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'd, I, I remember I'd drink on planes then, just kind of, because it would take the edge off. Yeah. And um, thankfully, I never 
had an issue with alcohol, but I think that you start toting a line if you need to do it for a certain that's reason. That's right. not a celebratory, right. whatever. Um, but uh, what got rid of it? Um, and I'm, I guess I still work with it. Like even talking about it right now, I can you feel know, a little edge. I uh, what happened to me, which I think will people will help people a little mm -hmm. bit here. All this stuff, what you're talking about, of course I've experienced in levels, but it all comes from stress, man. Mm. That's it. It's stress. Everything that I've been through, three nervous breakdowns, a thousand anxiety attacks, depression, it's all stress. If you taking care of yourself and everything's great, I doubt you're going to have a panic attack. I mean, But I, what's interesting is you don't... You, you could have hooked me up to the best lie detector in the world and said, hey, Josh, are you stressed? And I would have been like, nope. No, you don't. You don't know. That's the and that's the crazy but part. But you've got to start knowing yourself. That's mm -hmm. what's important for people watching. Like, I didn't know first time I uh, had anxiety attack was when... It's a, it's a story, but it's, I was supposed to do this movie with... Uh, I was supposed to meet the director with Eddie Murphy. It's I called I Spy, but I didn't have my passport. Okay, so I couldn't get on the plane to go meet the director and do the movie. So that's stress, mm -hmm. especially when I was younger. Stress, stress, stress. Hard week at General Hospital. Stress, stress, stress. So then I get to the airport. They're giving me a lot of, and I was with a friend of mine. They're giving me a lot of stuff because whatever they're not letting me on blah 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 and then finally they let me on and they let me on first so i'm stressed now but if you'd ask me then you just been it's another I'm, day uh, i'm good it's yeah. up so i'm walking down the thing and there's guys there and stuff and they're going asshole the fucking um because you're the first one yeah on oh you get special treatment huh so, um, me and my friend sit on the plane, and this dude walks in, and he says, you guys are fucking special, huh? Now, my friend said, he looked in my eyes, and I was Joe Frazier. <laughs> like this. Oh no! And my friend goes, "What are you? What are you talking about? Well, you guys get to get on first, and that." And my friend goes, "No, no, it was a mix-up, and this and this and that." He goes, "Yeah, right." Like you said, I'm feeling it now. Yeah. And then I looked at the guy and I said, uh, "Hey, why don't we get off the plane and talk about it?" Oh, jeez, full full sunny came <laughs> out. Full <laughs> sunny, yeah. And the guy got scared, right? But then what happened was I sat in the, in the, we're getting ready to, you know, where everybody's sitting down and I fall asleep. This is the first time I had an exam. I fall asleep and I wake up and I'm feeling, and I said, are we there? And my friend says, no, we haven't left. And I start feeling what you were saying and just worse. I like, I needed to take my clothes off and I needed off the fucking plane. Hmm. And he's, my friend's like, what's wrong? I said, uh, and I didn't know then, right? So I thought I'm having a nervous breakdown. My fourth or third, I don't know which one it was. And he says, here, have a drink, because he thought that was gonna help me, right? And I said, I don't know what I'm, what's happening, man. I think I'm having a breakdown. So then the plane takes off, and I remember standing in the aisle and that guy is over there by the bathroom and I'm all paranoid. Now I'm scared. See, that's the difference. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I have this animal side and a real scared side, mm -hmm. a real fragile side. That's, you probably all do. I think you all do. Yeah. But the, pro, the difference is when, you're, when you have mental illness, it's just amplified. Yeah. So if you're strong, you're like... Uh, if you're weak, woo! Mm -hmm. So that was the first anxiety that I experienced, and then I've, I've had, you know, other ones. Yeah. 
All right, back to you. What I think what uh, what started to fix it for me, it, or it came, it even started, uh, or it came back with uh, with General Hospital. So we, so we, I start GH. My first scene is with this guy. With and, me? Yeah. No. First scenes. I'm, I'm, I walk into the PD. I sit down with my mug. Dante gives me crap, and you're like walking through, and you're like, "Who's this guy?" Or, or I, I think I mouth off to you or something. And you look at Dante like, you better check this new cop. Like, he doesn't know who I am. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, who, who are you? You're, you're, you're whatever. You know, I was like the buy the book yeah, cop. Yeah. And, um, and with, it's with film, I guess, um, they'll kind of be like, lights, camera rolling, and action. And, and that's kind of it. And you have a lot more time to have your moment before. And you can take right. your time. And oh, yeah, if you sure. mess up halfway through something, yeah, you, can yeah, just, yeah. you can pick it up on your own and yeah. they'll, edit, they'll deal with it in editing. And daytime's way, way, way different. And so with ours, it's start to finish. If you mess up, usually you'll go yeah. back from the top. And there's, there's a heightened level of stress for any actor. And That's right. it would be interesting to see um, some really big actors go over to daytime for like a few I've weeks. Seen, and, I've seen... And film actors eyes get huge i mean it's just yeah and it's not that anyone's better or worse it's just a different experience yeah. it's but then it's, film acting is difficult right exactly yeah and so there's this countdown with with daytime where where they'll be like okay we're rolling in five four three you know silent or two and silent one and in that countdown there when i first started there's this and and you recognizing there's 50 people in this room, and if I can't for some reason regurgitate this dialogue, all 50 people stay. And and with soaps, it's you want to we want to stay on the air as long as we can, right. and it's it's I don't know, let's say it's 50,000 a day. It's probably much more, but if 50,000 a day, it's a 10-hour day. That means one minute costs. I don't know, all yeah. my math's wrong, but 700 bucks. Yeah. So if I waste one minute, 700, if I waste this, okay, now I'm at a couple grand. And you're doing this instead of the last, that's the last thing on your mind, you know. It's, yes. As an actor, you're in the moment. What do I want? How am I going to get it? You know, what's my why? Right. And I, I was avoiding the, the really good questions an actor should be asking themselves. And I'm just, am I going to piss someone off? Is this okay? Is this okay? And, and, and so... The anxiety started and to get Sonny to me. And Sonny is the last person you want to... And yeah, the most intimidating guy you could possibly work with in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> but no, you were, I was intimidated. And uh, But I'm cool. It's just I have to play this character. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and so I called my doc and I was like, I'm losing my ish. And and uh, my doctor's like, okay, I'll give you some beta blockers. It's called That's right. You told me about the beta blockers. And so they put me on that, and it basically kind of shuts off Does your, it? your fight or flight, like your adrenal gland, whatever. Um, and it worked. It worked really well. And so I took that for off and on for a year or so, maybe two years. And I think medication is a beautiful, I mean, you, you attest to this, like medication is a beautiful life-saving thing. Um, but for me... I knew that it was just, there was this mind thing that I, I couldn't overcome, but I knew it was possible. It, I, I knew the medication in my situation was a crutch. And just for that situation, because I knew there were moments where I was like, I'm completely fine. And then I let my mind get the better of me and, and, and then it's all game over. And, and so just recently, a year and a half ago, I um, started talking to your friend, Maj, and um, started to try to really learn about what, what was the why and yeah. what was the trigger yeah. and all this stuff. And so now I have really simple things in place that, this is not an ad, I, but if you want, you can download them. Uh, there's an app called FitMind, and it's a guy that just talks about uh, meditation, but not from a guru ohm standpoint, but yeah. just the, yeah. the facts of meditation. Um, and so I do, I do FitMind probably five days a week, it, and... Um, and then Damn. there's this app called Breathwork, uh, and yeah. uh, it's a and there's all these things called you know Energize, and it's before a workout, and then nighttime, and it's to wind down. And then there's a, a breathing technique called Panic Button, and like all these things. So before I go up, I I sit in my dressing room, put my feet on the floor, I get my breath right, and I do five minutes of a specific breath that kind of tranquilizes the body a little bit. And I'm telling you, I'm so much Good more you, at, I'm like at peace than with propranolol. 
And so I haven't I haven't taken the propranolol in a couple of years. And wow. And you have good days and bad days. You know, uh, there are moments yeah. you're just like whether it's you had a, a drink the night before or you you're, you slept four hours. Like there's always little things that you're like, oh, I'm I'm on edge today and I feel it. Yeah. Um, but um, but for me that that helped. And with COVID, um, I was really bothered by kind of how we handled the situation of. The vaccine's a beautiful thing, obviously, but um, is everybody hiding in your basement until the vaccine's here? And yeah. we, we didn't talk much about health and wellness. We didn't talk about breath work and proper vitamins and minerals and, and, and you know, how COVID was affecting some of these people that were completely healthy. You know, it was, it was different. Yeah. And you, obviously that's a touchy topic and no, it's careful. Not, it's, <laughs> it's a good topic. And, and, and you know, during COVID, I had to promote my book, which was really difficult because I was in a real horrible place anxiety-wise. Mm. But I think the book did well because of COVID. So mm. in a way, it's all yeah. right. But you said something interesting about the, the uh, medication and stuff. I believe now, but please, and because I get a lot of... Um, People saying, you know, about medication and what I, what they should do. I, he's not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. We're not professionals. I've just lived it, and he's lived his stuff. Um, so we're not encouraging or discouraging. But I will say, when you're really, like you were in a moment that was not great, right? Really kind of bad. You need something to, to get... You know, like I was in a, and I don't need to keep going over this, but I was at a point where if I didn't take medication, it was not going to end well. Right. So it really saved my life, literally. But I got off it a month, about three weeks ago. Weaned off it, right? Mm. And it's, I feel incredible, man. Wow. And and where it where I feel incredible is like that's so cool. Yeah, it's it's badass. Now I got to take lithium the rest of my life. That's just the way it is. Right. Because that's a different thing. whole different thing. Right. Um, I want to talk about your grandfather. Oh. You're yeah. very close to your grandfather. Sure am. What is it about your grandfather that? Uh... <sighs> uh, well. First off, if, if anybody's curious about him, on my Instagram page, yeah. we, have a, we have a conversation. And I highly recommend. That is the, it's just, watch, please go watch it. Um, nothing to do with me. It's, uh, he's, uh, <laughs> his name's Arthur Brown. Um, he's my mom's dad. He's ni he's, he'll be 98. He's 97. Damn! Yeah. And he's, uh, he's like a downhill skier, cross-country skier. He jogs. He bike rides. He's, he's an animal. Um, I can't believe how old he is. But um, we, he was the best man at my wedding. Um, we, through COVID, um, I had some time off. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm a pastor's kid. And I'm a, I, I like to think of myself as a, as a, as a strong Christian. Or, and for a lot, that's hard to say sometimes because I know a lot of people know people that call themselves Christians and I thought, right. you know, and it's, it's so, so I, I, maybe I leave the Christian word out of it and say, I've, <laughs> I've got a, I've got a strong relationship with the Lord. Right. Um, and that, that really kind of, uh, I mean, that, that dictates my, my steps, the words that come out of my mouth, everything, but I don't, I don't have a good Bible background. I, I didn't read the Bible growing right. up. I, it's boring and old and whatever. And, and so that was my mindset. And, and, and so during COVID, I was like, you know what, what, Grandpa, if, if you don't mind, if you don't have much to do in your late 90s, I would love if, if, if every morning at 9.30, we dive into something and we'll FaceTime. And, and he was like, cool, let's do it. And so six days a week for eight, nine months, I was filling journals and then it turned into me, and I'm not good with tech stuff, I wish I was, but it turned into me videotaping me facetiming him so i have it on video wow, that's amazing and, and and some days we're going into you know the old testament or the new testament and paul's travels and why scripture worded this way and and he's such a intellectual he has his phd and spoke a number of languages and lived out of the country for 20 years and just he's a he's a wild guy 
And, and so he, he's very well read. And so when he talks about this verse, but then he goes into the culture and then the Hebrew root of it. And he says all these things. I'm like, well, that makes sense. And, and, wow. and so it, he really opened my eyes to, 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 to life in a lot of ways where he gets up and it's like every morning, and it sounds silly, but every morning he, he says, you know, he'll go, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> and, and if he says it, not excited, he'll be like, come on, Brown. And he'll do it again. And he lives alone. My grandma passed away. He's, he, and so he'll, he'll say it louder with, with more gusto. And he, in, this morning we were talking. And the topic was, you know, the power of a new day. That's what we were talking about. Wow. And, and, and just how so many of us are living our life from a reactionary standpoint. Like mm -hmm. we, we're just reacting to life, mm -hmm. you know? And, 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 and so when you not declare- Not living in the moment. Like, right, yeah. not, not living in the moment, but like you, he lives in this bubble of forgiveness that like wow. to, this morning he woke up and he said, this is who I'm gonna be and this is how I'm gonna live. So then if I walked in and Maurice goes, what the F, what the, f you look stupid, you're doing it. And, and you just berate me. It's like, I already made that decision this morning. I'm good. Nothing, wow. nothing's going to affect me. You know, so then the guy cuts you off and you see yeah, you know, yeah, someone yeah. flicking someone off and screaming and, and someone cuts you off. You go, well, I hope he's, I'm going to pray for him. He's, he's probably having a bad Damn. day. And he has this, this fix on life. And, and, and we'll, um, maybe I'll get him out here and you guys can sit down together because you'd love to. I'd love to. I'd but, love to do a state of mind with him. Yeah. We'll would do, he? We'll do. Oh, he would, totally would. I'll, I'll get him out here. He lives in Chicago. Oh, I'll do it in a second. But, um, but yeah. But no. So there's just, there's something about it. When his, when his wife died, they married, you know, 60 years. She died in the living room and he, he tucked her in that night. Wow. And, and, and the first day he was, you know, just weeping. And the second day he was... He was numb, and the third day he was in denial, and and he's he's also a therapist and a psychoanalyst, and I mean just all this stuff. But third day's in denial, and on day four he came down for breakfast, and my mom was up with him, and my mom was like, "How you doing?" I goes, "You know what? I'm okay." And I, it took, and 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 he recognized those. This day I was in this. This day I was yeah. in this, and and this day I, I found out I'm okay. And and Grandma's ashes are in the living room. He talks to her. He he'll. They used to at dinner after dinner they dance. They bought. They both ballroom dancers, and so he he still gets up and he dances and he. Dang. You know, it's just it's this outlook on life that anyone in the world would look at him and be like, yeah. Well, I want that. I want that. I want to look like you. I want to have that feel like everything. But then no one wants to put in the the work. You know, it's because yeah, yeah, yeah. who wants to get up and do yoga at the crack of dawn yeah. and, and read, read, read scripture every morning. And, and like, there's, there's things that you have to do to have that disposition, Yes, that the routine, the, the rituals in but the morning. But that's what we need to do because yeah. you know what, especially with mental health, if you don't listen to your triggers or if you don't do what needs to be done before the trigger, you're going to be in trouble like I have been way too many times. Mm. I can't go, th I mean, look, if it happens, it happens. But I don't want to go through another thing that I went through last year. I can't. It's mm. just, so I'll, I'll do everything I need to do to prevent that from happening, mm -hmm. which is what you're talking about. Two more things I want to talk about. Netflix was, in, you know, I mean, look, to be number one is huge, right? Um, how'd you feel when you, when you and your wife first heard and what had, you know, was it a, it, it was, uh, to us, it was such a, flip. but you didn't expect it. No. no, I I mean, to be honest, we didn't have a casting director. We're calling our friends. <laughs> we're, I mean, financially we're, we're, we're just the whole time we're filming. We're trying to make it work. And Lauren and I are acting as producers for the first time and we had a killer team at DSX but there were so many firsts for Lauren and I that we'd get in the hotel room bed that night and we're just like do we stop now like do we even have a movie like and 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 there were so many little things that when Netflix came around it was per you know the perfect storm of COVID happened no one had a Christmas movie yeah yeah you know we, we it, it was good timing timing so. but um when Netflix kind of bought it our initials reactions were like crap we we kind of like 
sold one like they they only saw three scenes when they bought it and and they're gonna hate it and and you know like oh well we sold it you know yeah and no one's gonna watch it but who cares i mean that was really our mindset and and the i mean kudos to lauren for that script and and it when we woke up the morning after it came out it was it was number one in either in the world or in the u.s but we just looked at each other and we were like but to me there's no way there's to me it's, it's a gift from God, mm-hmm. that's what it seemed. That that to me, I would. Yeah, I, I, I mean, almost, I know it almost has to be I at that mean, point it, because it's, it's. I mean, if you look at Lauren and I, and you look at the situation, right. and, Yeah, it's a cute Christmas movie, but like, because you're not Tom Cruise, who could no. probably be number one. You know, if you, no one in that movie was no, no, nobody. So, and and what what was cool was the amount of people i mean it was number one in countries that don't celebrate christmas and it's called a california christmas right you know and 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 so but what was neat was the story with with lauren and her mother and the yeah yeah, i mean it was there was some deep stuff but it's also hallmarky christmas no yeah mixed with the gnarly i get get and there was something where like a lot of the the comments were man i relate yeah. When I when when I went through this, you know, and I think that's why you're so successful with this stuff is like you're brave enough to open up uh, yeah. like some dark stuff that's yeah. gone on in your life, and there's so many people who are like, bro, that's me, and and they can watch this and they really relate that with is, you, and and they simply they go, I'm not alone. There's that's something it. so awesome in that. Well, the story I tell, what you just said is exactly, you're exactly right. Is I just I was gonna not do this anymore at one point, mm. just because. I was just tired, mm-hmm. <laughs> and somebody wrote me nothing big. Sometimes I get nice things, but this was just a little thing. And at the end, she said, "You know, one thing that state of mind is it makes everybody feel they're not alone." And I said, "I got to continue. I don't know what it was it's about bigger me. than you." Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. one more thing, brother. All right. Um, I want you to tell me what Lauren and your baby mean to you wow no one's asked me that um the cop-out answer is everything um lauren really brought me outside myself in recognizing not not intentionally how selfish i am I wake up, I got to do this, and then I want to do this, and my career, and, I, and, I, and mm-hmm. the amount of times we say me and mine is ludicrous. Um, so having a life partner has been cool, and it hasn't been easy. It's been, it's been fun, it's been hard, it's been relaxing. There, it, every, every spectrum of the human emotion, you yeah. know? And, but recognizing, like diving in, vowing to your wife, that you're like, hey, thick and thin, I'm in the trenches with you, and you've we've shared stories that yes. you know what you know what's up, yes. and and this you know, and we live in a culture of you, you, it doesn't work, toss it, buy yeah. a new one, fix it, yeah. you know. There's there's nothing that you know people people don't want to get married anymore because it's like, well, what if someone better's around the corner? Especially well, in Hollywood, what? Yeah, and and so it's it, there's something there. It's like I choose you for life. That's it. And, and there's so much power in that, you know? Yeah. And, and then having a kid has been, has been awesome because it's, in a way, it's a, another reminder of it's not about me. But, but um, day one, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm holding Lauren's, the back of her neck. I got her knee. I'm down with the seeing the baby come out. And then I'm up with her kind of whispering in her ear and, you know, my soul cycle instructor. Yeah. You got this. Get it. <laughs> But, but, um, but baby came out and, you know, as the dad, you're not, you're not investing for nine months. I'm investing in Lauren. I'm not investing in the baby. She's yeah. investing in the baby. And so this stranger comes out of her and that's what it felt like. I didn't have this, oh, I love you. I'm going to nah. take a bullet for, that, that wasn't me. And, and, and I was like, who are you? This is cool. I'm happy. I got a daughter now. But there wasn't this 
instant connection. Right. And for me, what it was is after one week of keeping her alive and after a second week and all the diapers and getting up with her and, and holding her and protecting her and now she's smiling and laughing and like every day of investing, the love for me grows exponentially. Completely, yeah. and, and now it's, it's, I just want to, we want to build a family unit. Like Lauren wants like five kids. <laughs> I mean, that's probably going to change when we got three little nuggets running around. But right now we want this big family and, and, and it's, it's, it's incredible. It really is. Like I, it's, it's helped me too in my, in my workouts, in my work ethic at work, every, yeah. everything, because now I'm a dad. Now, yeah. now, you know, I, I was tired at 50 push-ups, but I'm a dad. I got to do 55, you know, and, and I, I was tired at four miles. I got to do six. I'm a dad. She's watching. That's a you cool know? way and, of looking at and, it. And, and that's been so, that's a cool way of looking that's at been it. so fun is, is I'm setting an example, you know, one, go big, go courageous, be, work hard. But two, like I'm excited or I hope I can sit down with her and be like, that's not how a dad should act. And I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, like I, I yeah, you, yeah. you know, owning your road, oh, owning yeah. your street when you mess up. Um, but it's it's everything, and I'm sure it's going to keep evolving it and unfolding. Spread, yeah. I'm a brand new dad, yeah. and Lauren and I've only been married for two years, so so it's, you know, the, there's probably a lot a lot of gnarly stuff up ahead, but but we both we both go into it. It's that yeah. same grandpa thing with the bubble of forgiveness. It's yeah. like I don't I, like. I don't even care what's tomorrow. Like, I don't even, I don't yeah. even care what happens. I know we're going to beat it. I know we're going to yeah, solve yeah, it. Yeah. And there's so much power in like declaring something today about tomorrow that yeah. hasn't even happened yet. Yeah. And be, because it, it kind of affirms and, and, um, and all that's by, you know, by faith and by grace of God, he's. Well, let me, let me, life. let me end this. Yeah. By saying, uh, I don't like Josh at all. He's an idiot, and I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, this was, you know, I, I, I'm going to say uh, this has been a really, really cool conversation, man. Um, just, you seem like you got your head on your shoulders. Mm. You, I don't see a problem with you at all. I don't. <laughs> if I had to be oh, a mind there. reader... <laughs> you, you've got it going. Just keep looking in the mirror, and if you both keep looking in the mirror, you're gonna be. You got a. You got a. You got Lauren who loves you to death. You got a baby now. You you you. You're a man of faith. It's cool to be Josh. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's cool to be Josh. <laughs> Well, thank you, man. And, it, and I'm going to shake your hand because that's the ending. That's how we end these things, man. We shake a hand? Yeah. I love anyway, that. Anyway, thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Damn, that's it. <laughs>